Shabbat Shalom, everyone. We're gathered today on the 28th of the 12th month, the last Sabbath of the year, if you will, which happens to line up with the 11th of March on the Gregorian calendar 2023. So we're getting ready to have the new year here. It, the Chodesh will be on the 15th, the first of the year, which if you have ever read the Dead Sea Scrolls, it does call that a, a, a high Sabbath. Not a not a work day. Quite like the first of the seventh month, Yom Teruah is a Sabbath. All the Chodeshim. It says from new month to new month, which there's only four of them that they regard. And from every Sabbath to Sabbath, all flesh shall come to worship before him. So you can get a head start on that if you start doing it now. But anyways, we are currently reading through the book of Hanok, and we've gotten through his parables up to the third were in the midst of it on chapter 64. So we last week had just read about the condemnation and the judgment against the kings and those that are in a positions of authority and how they're literally from the tribe of Yahuda who was given the kingdom. And it was foretold that from Abraham on through to Yahuda that kings of nations would come from his children. And that was specifically given to Yahuda. We covered a little bit of the history of how that started last week with uh, his two sons that were not from the Canaanite woman, Peretz and Zerah, that both of them had children who were royalty throughout the world. Peretz stayed with the tribes in Mitzrayim, and Zerah actually had his sons going out before the exodus of Moshe. And they founded different city-states of the Greeks at that time, the Athens, Troy, Attica, which became the Lacedaemonians or Spartans, uh, Colchis, where Calcol was. And then they also migrated and went further west. Crete was uh, inhabited by Hebrews at, during this time. So it was Sicily, Spain, which they knew as Tarshish eventually and Gaul, and then over into the British Isles as well. So whether or not they were traveling in different areas besides that, I am not as familiar. I haven't learned them all yet, but I definitely know that those are historical fact, and we'll get to it as we read. We'll cover all those things where you can see it for yourself. Great resources on the topic. Um, John Wilson was original lecturer in the 1700s about the Lost Tribes being the Celtic and Germanic peoples. Then you have in a more modern times, there was Charles Totten in the mid to late 1800s that was writing about the same topics, specifically Ephraim being Britain and the and the, the company of nations that were ruled by Britain, and Menashe, the half-tribe of Menashe being that great nation which was America. These things are also foretold in Revelation. They're not the only, there's just two of the 12 tribes. But uh, don't want to get too sidetracked on that. So we're finishing the third parable here. This is chapter 64. And it says, And other forms I saw hidden in that place. I heard the voice of the messenger saying, These are the messengers who descended to the earth and revealed what was hidden to the children of men and seduced the children of men into committing sin. That's what we'd call the watchers or the fallen angels, right? Mm -hmm. Chapter 65. And in those days, Noah saw the earth, that it had sunk down and its destruction was nigh or close. And he arose from thence and went to the ends of the earth and cried aloud to his grandfather, Hanok. And Noah said three times with an embittered voice, Hear me. Hear me, hear me. And I said unto him, Tell me what it is that is falling out on the earth, that the earth is in such evil plight and shaken. Least perchance I shall perish with it. And thereupon there was a great commotion on the earth, and a voice was heard from Shemayim, and I fell on my face. And this section again is another one of them that has... Uh, the interactions or writings they say they're Noah, they're Noahide interpolations with the book of Hanok. Um, 
Another section is on the birth of Noah. I think we might have covered it, or it's later on. I think it's chapter 105. But it's actually part of its own writing in the Dead Sea Scrolls called the, the Writings of Lemig, part of the Genesis Apocryphon. So it actually was a separate writing that was put on to the Ethiopian version of Hanok that preserved it in that fashion. But again, that's just more evidence that what we have is a little bit mangled compared to what it used to be. Verse 5, it says, And Hanok, my grandfather, came and stood by me and said unto me, Why have you cried unto me with a bitter cry and weeping? And a command has gone forth from the presence of Yahuwah concerning those who dwell on the earth, that their ruin is accomplished because they have learned all the secrets of the messengers and all the violence of the satans or adversaries and all their powers the most secret ones, and all the power of those who practice sorcery, which is what we call pharmakia. It specifically has to do with using roots and, and things to, to try to fix yourself instead of repentance. There's, that, there's a female doctor from Zimbabwe. There's also a pastor. His name was Henry Wright. He's passed away now. There's a few other doctors and ministers who are very cognizant of these things, of how literally sinful thinking and actions cause health problems. And if you repent, those can go away. But you substitute repentance with sorcery or just popping pills instead of fixing the sin issue that's causing the issues. And that's why it's prohibited. But sorcery, if you hadn't known, is pharmakia in the Greek. It says, and the power of witchcraft, which is magic, ritual magic using demons, and the power of those who make molten images for the whole earth, and how silver is produced from the dust of the earth, and how soft metal originates in the earth. For lead and tin are not produced from the earth like the first. It is a fountain that produces them. And a messenger stands therein, and that messenger is preeminent. And after that, my grandfather Hanok took hold of me by my hand and raised me up, and said unto me, Go, for I have asked Yahuwah of Ruach Oath, or of spirits, as touching this commotion on the earth. And he said unto me, Because of their unrighteousness, their judgment has been determined upon and shall not be withheld by me forever, because of the sorceries which they have searched out and learned. The earth and those who dwell upon it shall be destroyed. And these, they have no place of repentance forever, because they have shown them what is hidden, and they are the damned. But as for you, my son, Yahuwah of Ruach Oath knows that you are pure, and guiltless of this reproach concerning the secrets. So you see here the purity that a lot of people want to say, oh, it was his DNA that was pure, which I'm not going to go into that because it's never actually witnessed anywhere. It was talking about DNA. But right here, the purity that is concerning him is he was not, he was not guilty of involving himself in these secrets with witchcraft, sorcery, idolatry, or greed. The, the making of precious stones and, and metals to, to have inequality <clears throat> or weapons of war to fight with. None of that was attributed to him. Verse 12, And he has destined your name to be among the set apart and will preserve you amongst those who dwell on the earth and has destined your righteous seed both for kingship and for great honors. And from your seed shall pro proceed a fountain of the righteous and set apart without number forever. This is actually the first reference to kingship right here, coming from Noach's line, which is true. All the seed of mankind came from Noach, right? Chapter 66. And after that, he showed me the messengers of punishment, who are prepared to come and let loose all the powers of the waters, which are beneath in the earth 
in order to bring judgment and destruction on all who abide and dwell on the earth. And Yahuwah of Ruachoth gave commandment to the messengers who are going forth, or who were going forth, rather, that they should not cause the waters to rise, but should hold them in check, for those messengers were over the powers of the waters. And I went from the presence of Hanok. And we'll read about it again, but if you're not familiar, when the flood happens, the windows of the Shamayim were open, and the waters above the firmament came down into the earth, and the abysses of the deep, the seven, uh, were broken up, and the waters from below also filled up. So it came from the top and bottom. But when that wasn't happening, it was being held in by the power of a messenger from the will of our Creator. Chapter 67. And in those days, the word of Elohim came unto me. And he said unto me, notice it was the word that came to him. And he said, because our Mashiach was the word from the beginning, right? And he said unto me, Noach, your lot has come up before me, a lot without blame, a lot of love and uprightness. And now the messengers are making a wooden building. This was an added word, but they're making a wooden structure. And when they have completed the task, I will place my hand upon it and preserve it. And there shall come forth from it the seed of life. And a change shall set in so that the earth will not remain without inhabitant. And I will make fast your seed before me forever and ever, or leolam wa'ed, that's for ages and witnessed. <clears throat> and I will spread abroad those who dwell with you. It shall not be unfruitful on the face of the earth, but it shall be baruch, or blessed, and multiply on the earth in the name of Yahuwah. And he will imprison those messengers who have shown unrighteousness, in that burning valley which my grandfather Hanok had formerly shown to me in the west among the mountains of gold and silver and iron and soft metal and tin. And I saw that valley in which there was a great convulsion and a convulsion of the waters. And when all this took place from that fiery molten metal and from the convulsion thereof in that place, there was produced a smell of sulfur, and it was connected with those waters, and that valley of the messengers who had led astray burned beneath that land. And through its valleys proceed streams of fire, where these messengers are punished who had led astray those who dwell upon the earth. But those waters shall in those days serve the kings and the mighty and the exalted, and those who dwell on the earth for the healing of the body, but for the punishment of the ruach or spirit. Now their spirit is full of lust, that they may be punished in their body, for they have denied Yahuwah of Ruachoth, and see their punishment daily, and yet believe not in his name. Now, <clears throat> this might be broken up a little bit, but this springs, hot springs, those waters are for healing of the body. Certain of them have beneficial effects, but um, they're saying the cause of it is because of what's burning beneath, right? Some of them do have sulfur smells to them. Some of them do not. And in proportion, as the burning of their bodies becomes severe, a corresponding change shall take place in their spirit forever and ever. For before Yahuwah of spirits, or Ruach Oath, none shall utter an idle word. For the judgment shall come upon them, because they believe in the lust of their body, and deny the Ruach of Yahuwah. What Yahuqanon says, the lust of the flesh, the, 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 the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, right? And those same waters will undergo a change in those days. For when those messengers are punished in these waters, 
these water springs shall change their temperature. And when the messengers ascend, this water of the springs shall change and become cold. And I heard Mikael, which again, it means who is like El, right? And I heard Mikael answering and saying, this judgment wherewith the messengers are judged is a testimony for the kings and the mighty who possess the earth. Because these waters of judgment minister to the healing of the body of the kings and the lust of their body, therefore they will not see and will not believe that those waters will change and become a fire which burns forever. Chapter 68 And after that, my grandfather Hanok gave me the teaching of all the secrets in the book, in the parables, which had been given to him. So this is, again, the writings of Noach, and he's talking about how the, the writings that Hanok had made were given to him. It, <clears throat> in the Dead Sea Scrolls, you have him giving these writings, or in the book of Yobelim, rather, he gives these writings to Shem, and after his death and the languages are changed, no one actually touches them again until Abraham repents and, and prays to Yahuwah to be delivered from evil Ruach Oath and spirits. So he gives him through our Mashiach the language of creation, <clears throat> which is Yobelim chapter 12. And then he gives him the books of his forefathers to transcribe and then study. And then you can see in the Dead Sea Scrolls and in Yobelim and elsewhere, he studies these books. He goes around when he's in, excuse me, when he's in Mitzrayim originally, he's talking to Pharaoh Zohar and they take his wife. Before the, they, they take Sarai, he reads, they ask for words of wisdom and he reads to them the words of Hanok. So. This was the law before they got the Torah, right? What was within these writings, the writings of Hanok, Lemek, Noak, and then when Abraham had them, he made his own writings that he passed down to Yitzhak. Presumably Yitzhak, although I haven't found it written anywhere, he had his own writings. And then Yaakov, when he was given the tablets that came down and he was shown all that would happen to him and his children, he wrote everything down as well. But even before then, there's there's re record in the Dead Sea Scrolls of firsthand accounts of what he was doing. So we all of those would have been given to Louis, and this is actually recorded. It was given to Louis. Louis gave it to Kohath, Kohath, or Amram rather. Amram gave it to Kohath, and Kohath's children were Aharon, Miriam, Aharon, and uh, Moshe there. This is, and he put them together for me in the words of the book of the parables. And on that day, Mikael answered Raphael and said, The power of the Ruach transports and makes me to tremble because of the severity of the judgment of the secrets, the judgment of the messengers. Who can endure the severe judgment which has been executed and before which they melt away? And Mikael answered again and said to Raphael, who is he whose heart is not softened concerning it, and whose reins are not troubled by this word of judgment that has gone forth upon them because of those who have thus led them out? And he's talking about the punishment against the fallen messengers and their children, right? Which we've already covered chapters 10 through 16 of, the, of Hanok earlier. And it came to pass when he stood before Yahuwah of Ruachoth, or spirits, Mikael said thus to Raphael, I will not take their part under the eye of Yahuwah, for Yahuwah of Ruachoth has been angry with them, because they do as if they were Yahuwah. Therefore all that is hidden shall come upon them for ages and witnessed, or Leolam Ed, right, forever and ever. For neither messengers nor man shall have his portion, but alone they have received their judgment forever and ever. Chapter 69 
And after this judgment, they shall terrify and make them to tremble, because they have shown this to those who dwell on the earth. And behold the names of those messengers, and these are their names. And again, this might be somewhat corrupted. You have two mentions of Azazel, for example. But this is what we have. So it says, the first of them is Shamyaza. Samyaza. The second, Artikifa. Arti the third, Armen. The fourth, Kokavel or Kokabel, which is Kokav is the star of El, right? The fifth is Torael. The sixth, Rumyal or Rumyal. They would do originally, they would have J's right here. And that's not because it was pronounced with a J in English, but the German J was a Y sound. Rumyal. All right. The seventh is Daniel. The eighth is Nikhil or Nikael. The ninth, Barak, Barak El, which is the lightning of El. The tenth is Azazel. The eleventh, Armaros. The twelfth, Batariel. The thirteenth, Busayi or Busa Siel, the 14th Hananel or Hananel, the favor of El, the 15th Torel, which is the explorer or the searcher of El, the 16th is Simpa or Sima Pcl, the 17th is Yetrel, the 18th is Tumael, the 19th is Torel, and the 20th is Rumael. The exalted of El, right? And the 21st is Azazel. And these are the chiefs of their messengers and their names, and their chief ones over hundreds and over fifties and over tens. So in the same way that the children were allotted and divided, where you had the le the Alfim, the leaders of thousands, which was the highest leaders that were not known by name, but that's what we get corresponding with a sheriff today or the leader of a shire. The shire reef was the leader of thousands. And that was carried into the sheriff of today for a county over America, right? But they also had their leaders of hundreds, leaders of fifties and leaders of tens at these times carried on through into even into today. But it's definitely not practiced so much anymore. It says the name of the first, Yakon, that is, the one who led astray all the sons of El, and brought them down to the earth, and led them astray through the daughters of men. This has gone over in more detail in the homo, the Clementine homilies and the recognitions of Clement, but the messengers that the watchers came from were from the first Shemaim, the one directly above us. They were, that's their habitation. And they seen the sons of men being led astray, petitioned Yahuwah to come down to teach men righteousness, to show them how they could live without sin. So it was granted to them to do so. And they came down changing into different forms, animals or clothing or whatever, and then making themselves known to men. But as they changed into a form of a man, they also had temptation and they fell the temptation. So they, what their object of what they tried to do was not accomplished. That's where you get these stories from the mythologies, from the Greeks for their pagan mighty ones and how they can change different forms and do all these fantastic things. It was what the messengers did. And the second was named as Biel, he imparted to the Kodeshim, or set apart ones of El, evil counsel, and led them astray so that they defiled their bodies with the daughters of men. And the third was named Gadriel. This is Gadriel, or they pronounce it also as Godriel. And this is Gadar, is to enclose, to hedge in, to fence, or to fence in or prick, to confine. Quite like Mitzrayim is the confinement of the waters as well. 
but this is the name where you get God, right? God Riel, and he's the one. He it is who showed the children of men all the blows of death, and he led astray Hua, or Eve, and showed the weapons of death to the sons of men. So he was the one who led Hua astray in the garden, just so you know. And he also taught the weapons of death to the sons of men, the shield and the coat of mail, and the sword for battle, and all the weapons of death to the children of men. He was a murderer from the beginning. It was witnessed, right? And from his hand they have proceeded against those who dwell on the earth from that day and forevermore, or for unto ages, if you will. Because this says forevermore, but there will be a definite end to those things. And the fourth was named Peni Mule. He taught the children of men the bitter and the sweet, and he taught them all the secrets of their wisdom. And he instructed mankind in writing with ink and paper, and thereby many sinned from eternity to eternity, or from ages to ages, until this day. For men were not created for such a purpose, to give confirmation to their good belief with pen and ink. For men were created exactly like the messengers, to the intent that they should continue pure and righteous. And death, which destroys everything, could not have taken hold of them. But through this their knowledge they are perishing, and through this power it is consuming men. It says me there, but I'm pretty sure that meant men. And another witness for this, it's quite often overlooked, but in Kohelet or Ecclesiastes chapter 12, the last chapter, it goes into detail about um, there's many books that are made, but the words of wisdom are all made by one shepherd. And they, the scriptures should be our study continually and not to worry about the writings or the other writings of men because they can be quite disastrous we're not supposed to be doing you know especially as a man what you have your mindset to is very important all right verse 12 and the fifth was named kazdiya this is he who showed the children of men all the wicked smitings of spirits and demons and the smitings of the embryo in the womb, meaning what we call abortion, was taught by a fallen messenger, that it may pass away. And the smitings of the inner being that bites of the serpent, and the smitings which befall through the noontide heat. The, so what can happen with heat stroke, right? The son of the serpent named Tabaet. Tabaet. Yeah. If you recall, it was Yahudith, they call her Judith, right? But Yahudith's husband, he was actually had heat stroke and died. If you're not familiar, Yahudith is also the, she's a heroine, if you will, but she was the main, the main uh, principal character in the book by the same name of Yahudith or Judith which is an apocryphal book that takes place during the time of the Greeks ruling um, the third beast kingdom, if you will, from Daniel. And this is the task of Casbiel, the chief of the oath, which he showed to the set apart ones when he dwelt high above in esteem. And its name is Bika. Again, with the stuff that is in here, you have to keep in mind that sometimes we have abridgments or things that are not what they were fully. As we read through this, you'll see that the oath that's being spoken of is literally the word from the beginning through which all things were made, which is our Mashiach. He's also called the oath of the rod of his word in the foretellers. So, but the way this reads is a little, little interesting. So we'll just keep going. It says, this messenger requested Mikael to show him the hidden name, that he might enunciate it in the oath, 
so that those might quake before that name and oath, who revealed all that was in secret to the children of men. And this is the power of this oath, for it is powerful and strong. And he placed this oath, Ake, in the hand of Mikael. And these are the secrets of this oath, and they are strong through his oath. And the Shemaim was suspended before the world was created and forever. Meaning the Shemaim were made first, right? As the first of his works of old. Or actually, the, the Father made our Mashiach, and then our Mashiach's first work was the Shemaim above, the highest Shemaim, as it mentions in Genesis chapter 1 and Yobelim or Jubilees chapter 2. And through it, the earth was founded upon the water. And from the secret recesses of the mountains come beautiful waters from the creation of the world and unto eternity. And through that oath, the sea was created. And as its foundation, he set for it the sand against the time of anger. And it dare not pass beyond it from the creation of the world unto, t unto eternity meaning he gave the waters a limit, the sands of the seashore limit where the waters can go. And his children, remember, are going to be made like the sands which are by the seashore. Excuse me. That's also a picture and a parable if you look at it and you think on it, what he says about his children and everything else in relation to what is creation, what do the waters represent, how water actually works in creation. It's all, it it's all goes together. And through that oath are the depths made fast, and abide and stir not from their place from eternity to eternity. <clears throat> and through that oath the sun and moon complete their course, and deviate not from their ordinance from eternity to eternity, or from ages to ages. And through that oath the stars complete their course, and he calls them by their names. And they answer him from eternity to eternity. And in like manner, the Ruach Oath, or spirits of the water, and of the winds, and of all zephyrs, and paths from all the quarters of the winds. And there are preserved the voices of the thunder, and the light of the lightnings, and they are preserved, the chambers of the hail, and the chambers of the hoarfrost, and the chambers of the mist, and the chambers of the rain and the dew. And all these believe and give thanks before Yahuwah of Ruach Oath, and esteem with all their power, and their food is in every act of thanksgiving. They thank and esteem and extol the name of Yahuwah of spirits forever and ever. So that kind of goes out of it, but this is all, again, the word or the oath here is the word from the beginning, literally the Aleph Bet, the word from the bosom of the Father through which all things were made. And we've already covered that uh, at least once. We might, we'll probably go over it specifically some other time. But the 22 works line up with the 22 Aleph Bet letters, which literally line up with the 22 works that our Mashiach is doing through history in creation before the millennial reign. So it's all in parables, just like he said. All right, verse 25. <clears throat> and this oath is mighty over them, and through it they are preserved, and their paths are preserved, and their course is not destroyed. And there was great joy amongst them, and they barak and esteemed and extolled, because the name of the son of Adam had been revealed unto them, meaning the name of Yahushua. Right. Yahuwah, Yahushua. And he sat on the throne of esteem, and the sum of judgment was given unto the son of Adam. He, our Mashiach said, all authority was given to him, right? And just as the father gave authority to the word from his bosom, so our Mashiach said when he was there in the flesh, and I don't judge you, but the word I've spoken will judge you in the last day. 
because he only sees or he only does what he sees and hears he's he's like the hand in the glove picture that we've talked about right that's why he says if you've seen me you've seen the father not because they're identical not because they're the same individual because he does exactly that which his father is doing he copies it he is the truth and he can't be contrary to himself this is in the sum of judgment was given unto the son of adam and he caused the sinners to pass away and be destroyed from off or from off the face of the earth and those who have led the world astray with chains shall they be bound and in their assemblage place of destruction shall they be imprisoned and all their works vanish from the face of the earth and from henceforth there shall be nothing corruptible for that son of adam has appeared and has seated himself on the throne of his esteem. And all evil shall pass away before his face or presence. And the word of that son of Adam shall go forth and be strong before Yahuwah of Ruach Oath. And he said his word is Ruach, his spirit, right? Ruach and life. <clears throat> this is the third parable of Hanok which means that that was the end of the third parable there. Okay, we're on chapter 70. It says, And it came to pass after this that his name during his lifetime was raised aloft to that son of Adam and to Yahuwah of Ruach Oath from amongst those who dwell on the earth. So you can see here, that our Mashiach and the Father are not the same individual. They are unique to themselves. The Father is also known as the self-existent one who did not come into being, the unbegotten, right? The eternal El, the only true Elohim. And our Mashiach is known as the messenger Yahuwah, the son of Adam, the word of Yahuwah. But he's not the same as his father. They are unique. It specifically goes into detail on this in the recognitions of Clement, where he's describing creation. He says, there was the unbegotten from the beginning, and then from him proceeded a second will, which is our Mashiach, and from them, all of creation, which is exactly what we can see throughout the accounts elsewhere in Genesis and Yahukanon's right at the beginning there. It's how he functioned. This is what happened in reality. Also, Proverbs chapter 8, right? But it says, verse 2, And he was raised aloft on the chariots of the Ruach, and his name vanished among them. And from that day I was no longer numbered amongst them. And he set me between the two winds, between the north and the west where the messengers took the cords to measure for me the place for the elect and righteous. The Greek word angels just means messengers. I only use messengers because that clearly describes what they are and what it's for. All stars are messengers. All messengers are telling a message. All of creation has messengers involving them because it's all messages. It's a it's information for man to learn the truth. Ah, so Brother Paul asked, can I explain how that differs from the Trinity? The Trinity is a Nicolaitan Catholic Christian concept that was foretold as the three Ogduodes or the three frog-like spirits in Revelation. It was first established by Sixtus III, the 42nd Bishop of the Roman Assembly, and he was the foretold 666 of Revelation who would bring in the abomination of desolation and other things. He established by punishment from the sword of Rome that you shall believe in a triune uh, three in one co-equal co-eternal elohim the father the son and the kodesh or the set apart or the the holy spirit if you will they called it but the idea of it's the father only who's eternal and unbegotten 
our Mashiach was the firstborn of creation. He's not co-eternal. He's not co-equal because he said himself that the Father is greater. So the two, they are separate and unique individuals and not three in one. The Ruach is the word from the mouth of our Mashiach that does his, it's the effectual power of the two, it says, but has no will of its own, only speaks what it hears. It's like a mirror image of the intentions of our Mashiach, just as our Mashiach is the exact representation of his father. But he is unique. He is his own individual and he has free will. This is why he was rewarded with the name above every name. He inherited it and he was set at the right hand of the Most High because he freely chose to do his will. He could, just like we could, choose to do anything we want. But he submitted to his father and was rewarded for it as a picture for what mankind should do to him. But um, <clears throat> that's, that's the biggest difference. They are unique individuals, each having their own, right? And they're not three in one. The Trinity specifically believes in a three co-eternal, co-equal in one one Elohim in three manifestations, and that is not scriptural. That is satanic. And he raised aloft on the chariots of the Ruach, and his name vanished among men. This is speaking of Hanok, right? And he was no longer, and I was no longer numbered amongst them, and he set me between the two winds, between the north and the west, where the messengers took the cords to measure for me the place of the elect and righteous. It's interesting. All right. And then it says, And there I saw the first fathers and the righteous who from the beginning dwell in that place. Chapter 71. And it came to pass after this that my Ruach, or spirit, was translated, and it ascended into the Shemaim. And I saw the set-apart sons of Elohim. They were stepping on flames of fire. Their garments were white, and their raiment, and their faces shone like snow. Now, the messengers glowed and shone white like snow. Our Mashiach's face was like that of the sun. And you remember the father's garments were seven, were, were brighter than the sun, where you couldn't even look upon his face, but his garments were even brighter than the sun. That right there also shows a distinction. And like it's mentioned by Shaul and others, everyone's going to have their own reward. The, your faces, your body will be lightened based on your righteousness or the reward that you get. And each one is individual of itself. It's when he talks about each star is, uh, has its own esteem, right? Which, verse 2, it says, And I saw two streams of fire, and the light of that fire shone like Hansoneth. And I fell on my face before Yahuwah of Ruach Oath, and, Mika, or, and the messenger Mikael, one of the chief messengers, seized me by my right hand. And lifted me up and led me forth into all the secrets. And he showed me all the secrets of righteousness. Real quick before we continue. Here's another picture. Like the father set his son as the messenger Yahuwah over his people. Right? He is the El of Yisrael, if you will. And in the same way, our Mashiach put Mikael, which his name means who is like El, over his people. And specifically, Mikael is the chief over the sons of Yisrael who are not sinning. The ones that are in covenant relationship with him, they have the chief messenger over them, and he's the one that shepherds them. This is explained by, in you see allusions to it in Daniel, where it says only Mikael was helping him with the people. And then you can also see it in the shepherd of Hermas in one of the parables that he has with the willow tree, where it's specifically mentioned. But it's mentioned also. Oh. 
I can't remember now. I think there's another one more place where it's also mentioned that Mikael is over the, the pious. Oh, it's actually in the book of Hanok here where he's over the choice people of the world, which is the one who is like El is over the ones that are obedient. But that is, again, a picture as our Mashiach sees, so he does, right? He only copies what he sees from above. <clears throat> but verse four here. And he showed me all the secrets of the ends of the Shemaim, and all the chambers of all the stars, and all the luminaries, whence they proceed before the face of the Kodeshim, or set apart ones. And he translated my Ruach into the Shemaim of Shemaim, which means above the firmament, right? And I saw there, as it were, a structure built of crystals. And between those crystals, tongues of living fire. And it's mentioned in the Dead Sea Scrolls, in Ezekiel, and a few other places that the firmament is crystal, ice-like crystal in appearance. Right? So this is the Shemaim of Shemaim. They actually say, I think we talked about this before, but in the Testament of Louis, in the what's called the Ascension of Yeshiyahu or Isaiah, it, it, which records his martyrdom where he was sawn asunder with a wooden saw and then Irenaeus and the Dead Sea Scrolls in what's called the songs of the Sabbath sacrifices they all talk about the multiple Shemaims or firm there's the firmament and then there's six other Shemaim above each one different from the others <clears throat> So verse 6, it says, And my Ruach saw the girdle which girt that house of fire, and on its four sides were streams full of living fire, and they girt that house, or they wrapped around it, right? And round about were seraphim, cherubim, and ophanim, which are different types of messengers. And these are they who sleep not, and guard the throne of his esteem. And I saw a messenger who could not be counted. Sorry, I saw messengers who could not be counted. A thousand thousands and ten thousand times ten thousand. Encircling that house. This is an allusion to, in, in his children were patterned out these things as well. If you ever pay attention, the way that the 12 tribes were put around the, 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 the tabernacle in the wilderness correlates with the zodiac, right? And the things going on there, this, this constellations. Ephraim and Manasseh were going to be the, 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 ten, the, thousands, the thousands of thousands of Ephraim and the thousands of Manasseh, right? So it's a picture here. It's a parable of those things and a picture of them as well only doing what he sees again, though. The repeat of the things that are, if you will. And if you recall, it was already mentioned in uh, earlier in the book of Hanok here, that the stars are or the, the you know messengers and they're representative of his children. <clears throat> Excuse me. Which is just like when our Mashiach came on earth, he was the light of the world, the great light, like the sun or the bridegroom, if you will, preaching the kingdom, which is the like the moon. And he empowered and sent out the children of light or the stars that run the corset before them without deviation or fail. <clears throat> Excuse me. And Mikael and Raphael and Gabriel and Fenuel. So who is like El? My healer is El, or El is a healer, the mighty man of El, and the face of El. Penuel or Fenuel is the face of El. And the set-apart messengers who were are above in the Shemaim go in and out of that house. And they came forth from that house, and Mikael, and Gabriel, and Raphael, and Fenuel, and many set-apart messengers without number. And with them, the head of days, his head, white and pure as wool, and his raiment, 
indescribable. And I fell on my face and my whole body became relaxed and my Ruach was transfigured. So the same image that our Mashiach looks like after in the book of Revelation is how the Father looks there or how he can describe it. But remember, no one can see the Father and live. <clears throat> Now, if you recall, both this instance and the one before, he was not bodily before them in the Shemaim. He was changed into like a messenger, and he was brought up in the Ruach to be able to see those things. And it says, and I cried with a loud voice with the Ruach of power, and Baruch and esteemed and extolled, and these Baraka, or blessings, which went forth out of my mouth were well-pleasing before that head of days. And that head of days, or ancient of days, the one who precedes creation, right, came with Mikael and Gabriel, Raphael and Fenuel, thousands and ten thousands of messengers without number. Now, right here, it says there's a lost passage herein, or wherein the son of Adam was described as accompanying the head of days. And Hanok asked one of these messengers, concerning the son of Adam as to who he was. The, why this is removed again, that's for a different time. But like I was saying, sometimes you have abridged versions, and this is just one section that acknowledges there's something missing here. Um, but uh, the father came in with the chief messengers and with the son of Adam, and then Hanok would have questioned, saying, who is that son of Adam? And he, i.e. the messenger, came to me and greeted me with his voice and said unto me, This is the son of Adam who is born unto righteousness, and righteousness abides over him, and the righteousness of the head of days forsakes him not. And he said unto me, He proclaims unto you shalom in the name of the world to come. For from hence has proceeded shalom since the creation of the world. And so shall it be unto you forever and forever and ever. So it shall be unto Hanok for ages and unto ages and witnessed, because he was not going to die. And all shall walk in his ways, since righteousness never forsakes him. With him will be their dwelling places which our Mashiach said, I've gone to make a, uh, I've gone to build you a dwelling place and then I shall come to you again and bring you with me where I am, right? And with him, their heritage, and they shall not be separated from him forever and ever and ever. And he desires that we be with him where he is, right? Just like he prayed. And so there shall be length of days with that son of Adam, and the righteous shall have shalom and an upright way in the name of Yahuwah of Ruachot forever and ever. All right, just one moment. All right, so we're going to go ahead and wrap it up for today, and then we'll continue with chapter 72 with the course of the sun and the luminaries, which is uh, covered in the next, I believe, 10 or so chapters. So thank you all for your time. You have a wonderful Shabbat and a Shavuot Tov. Great week ahead, Father willing. We love you all and we'll see you next time.